Um, I will be talking about tumor infiltrating lymphocytes for um, treatment of solid tumors. Um, we are a publicly traded company, so during the course of this presentation, I'll be making forward-looking statements. Um, in terms of a corporate perspective and sort of what our technology is, uh, we are a cell therapy company. We believe we have a platform technology that is used for treatment of solid tumors. The um, actual concept came from National Cancer Institute, NCI, from Dr. Rosenberg's lab, and we took a license to that technology back in 2011. I have been with the company since 2016. We have really focused on optimization of manufacturing method, turning it into a shortened manufacturing method and a product that is cryopreserved. From a corporate perspective, we are located in multiple um, locations within US and we have an EU presence. In US, we are in San Carlos, that's our corporate headquarter. That's around half an hour north of Apple um, Incorporation. Maybe that's a better um, pivot. And our R&D facility is out in Tampa, and we also um, have offices in New York. We have just over about 100 employees, and we are a market cap of around 1.3 billion. Um, we continue working on, we are a pivotal stage development program, so I'll talk to you about our metastatic melanoma program and our plans into getting the product into a registration path and hopefully to patients ultimately. In terms of key highlights, I'm just going to focus on a few things. As I noted, I really be really focused since 2016 in process optimization. People who work in cell and gene therapy really understand that in order to get a product out, you have to have a very robust manufacturing method. So that was our initial focus. Uh, we shortened the manufacturing process. We then dosed the number of patients in metastatic melanoma and provided this information to FDA in 2018. As part of an engagement with FDA, as part of an end of phase two meeting with FDA, um, we reached agreement that a single cohort uh, is supportive of registration, and an RMAT designation was awarded to our program. Um, I will show you data that we showed for 47 patients who were consecutively dosed in our um, cohort two of C14401 study. And this is in highly refractory metastatic melanoma patients subsequent to progression on anti PD1. Um, once the end of phase two meeting was held, we have now started our pivotal program in 2019 and we announced that we have started patient dosing and we are looking at a potential BLA submission for second half of 2020. Um, just as a, at a highlight in terms of what our um, potential benefits and advantages of the company is, um, we have uh, four ongoing clinical studies. We are looking at metastatic melanoma, cervical, um, non-small cell lung cancer, as well as head and neck indications. Um, I will show you, uh, for the sake of time, only the metastatic melanoma data as well as cervical today, but we have data in head and neck as well that we have presented. We have well over 150 patients that we have dosed at IOVANCE with uh, our cell therapy product. Um, as I noted, in metastatic melanoma, we have RMAT designation, orphan drug designation, fast track, um, as well, uh, and, and in cervical cancer, we have similar ones. We have orphan drug designation and, and fast track desi de designation granted. Um, in terms of uh, activities, we are both active in US and EU. We are, uh, three of our clinical studies are active in EU and uh, multiple countries CTAs have been submitted. We have had also local health authorities including meeting with PAI in, in, in EU before. Um, so we certainly have uh, a EU strategy for our drug development. We are not just focusing on US FDA. From a platform perspective, we also very much focus on multiple indications. We do not have enough resources to run every single indication within the company, so we utilize our collaborations with academic institutions very heavily, and we run our new indications through such collaborations first, and then once we see a signal, we bring those programs in-house. Now, what is TIL? Um, it's a, a cell that is present in the site of tumor when a tumor is detected in the body. And regular basis, when our body is healthy and the pressure of the disease is not very high, these immune cells come to the site of a lesion that may be forming and they clear the disease. This is why we don't see a lot of young you know, patients with you know, metastatic melanoma walking around, because our immune system actually clears it. But as we age, as we are prone to environmental factors, uh, these, these um, cells develop and our immune system is not able to clear it in a timely manner, the cells are still present at the site of lesion. So what Rosenberg um, identified was if you take the cells out, we lymphodeplete the patient, we allow for cells to get expanded and we administer them back to the patients, 
with one time administration, which is fairly common to a lot of the cell therapies nowadays, we see these incredibly durable responses. In fact, Rosenberg's patients, 24% um, of the patients went into a CR after a single administration, and after seven to 10 years out, uh, most of the patients were still in CR. So very, very deep, durable, um, curable type responses. He ran also a small study for cervical cancer. A very similar phenomena was noted that two patients went into a deep CR and both were in CR in five and six years of follow-up. So um, just to also highlight what is the difference between TIL, CAR-T, TCR, I know there's a lot of discussions here today. Um, TIL is a polyclonal product. It's very different than CAR-Ts, for example, which targets a single clone. We believe that for solid tumors, we need a polyclonal product. That's the benefit that the product uh, you know, provides. It has a different um, safety profile compared to CAR-Ts because it's autologous, and each patient is a batch, and each batch is a patient. From a manufacturing uh, perspective, we have uh, partners and CMOs both in US and EU, and we work very closely with them. Um, the process itself is shown here. The patient is seen, uh, about a centimeter cube of the tumor is removed and is directly shipped to our CMOs where it's fragmented and is placed in media. Um, upon a course of about 22-day uh, growth, the cells uh, leave the tumor. They're amplified to billions, so we dose between one to 150 billion to the patients. And by day 22, these cells are harvested and they're ready for administration um, when this site and the patient is ready. Since the product is cryopreserved, it's available when the site is ready. And so um, we can administer by day 24, one day each site for um, shipment. The patient does undergo psi flu um, lymphodepletion. This, this regimen was heavily worked on by Steve Rosenberg, and we certainly benefit from the work that he has conducted. And subsequent to um, receipt of TIL, we also administer up to six doses of IL-2. This is not the same as full course of IL-2, certainly very different than the IL-2 full dose that has been administered for therapeutic. Um, from a market potential, this is a huge market. Obviously, we are looking at, we're looking at the stats from US uh, SEER database. Um, from 1.6 million cases of new um, cancer cases in US, um, about 90% are solid tumors. So, uh, and, and a lot of them have benefited from checkpoint therapy becoming available to them, yet subsequent to progression on checkpoints, there's really very few options that is available to the patients. Our pipeline, I spoke to it as slightly before, melanoma, cervical cancer, head and neck are certainly on strategy. We also are looking into non-small cell lung cancer. At the same time, we are moving the product into earlier lines of therapy in combination with standard of care, which is checkpoints. Um, again, we utilize our corporate partners, such as MD Anderson or other institutions for new indications such as ovarian and sarcoma. In metastatic melanoma, just to kind of give a landscape as to what it looks like, um, 90,000 new patients get diagnosed annually in US a year, and unfortunately, about 10,000 still die, despite the fact that many available therapies are available. Um, the available care after a patient progresses on anti-PD-1, and if they have a BRAF mutation on BRAF, is really only chemotherapy, and that response rate is around 4 to 10%. So the patients are considered significant on medical need, and the 4 to 10% is what is available care for them. This study shown here is what we call ANOVA TIL01, our metastatic melanoma um, study. Cohort 2 is using administration of generation 2 manufacturing product. Um, and I will show you 47 patients that were dosed and presented at CITI um, in 2018. Um, this product, this uh, study is global. Uh, we have six or seven countries that are active in EU as well as US. Um, and as I noted, uh, this is considered a potential anti-ATMP uh, product. We have orphan drug designation, an RMAT designation, as well as a fast track for this particular product. Uh, in terms of patient population, I won't spend too much time on it. Just the point that I'm trying to make is the patient population is highly, highly refractory. They had received a median of 3.3 prior lines of therapy. And when we say line, anything that is concomitantly administered is considered one line. So most of these patients typically are treated in first line with an anti-PD-1 and anti-CTLA-4. We consider that one line. So they have really seen all available care. They have highly bulky disease at baseline. They have around 11 centimeters of mass at baseline. That's, that's quite a bulky disease. Their um, the LDH is elevated, which is a marker for poor survival, unfortunately. So it's a very late line patient population altogether. Um, typical of what you would expect from treatment emergent adverse event for a product that is administered once, you can see the TEAEs are very much 
right after administration of the product for about two weeks, and then you don't see a whole lot happening. The patient is done with therapy as one would expect. There was an earlier discussion, I know Bluebird was talking about the total cost of care. I think this is important for cell therapies to really understand that total cost of care really is a one-time deal as opposed to chronic therapies such as checkpoints or otherwise. So that, that's an important factor to consider. Overall response rate for this late-line patient population was 38%. We are beginning to see CR, and it shows fairly late, and I'll show you a swim lane to, to sort of highlight that. Um, partial responses and, and uh, complete responses have all now been confirmed. Um, the median DOR is still premature and is continuing between 1.3 and 14 months. And as a median dose, we had dosed around 26 billion cells that we have administered to the patients. This is a swim lane of time to response for all the responders. A couple of points are maybe worth noting. One, uh, most patients see a benefit at their first assessment, which is typically six, um, after six weeks. So the PRs <clears throat> are fairly common, very early at the first assessment are, are noticeable. A second observation is that you can see the patients may go into a deeper response. So our CR for patient number 43 um, showed up at month nine. This is also commonly seen with you know, tail therapy from Rosenberg's data. And a third point that I wanted to highlight is if you look at the left-hand side of this slide, is patients' prior response to prior anti-PD-1. These patients, their best response, most of them, to prior anti-PD-1 was PD. In other words, they had no benefit whatsoever from their anti-PD-1. So this is called the primary refractory patient population. Uh, it's usually not expected to see an immune uh, therapy work on these patients because they used to be called patients with cold tumors. We see that that's not the case, and this is testimony to a polyclonal TIL product. It does not just utilize a PD-1, pd one axis of signaling. Um, a, a swim lane or a waterfall is shown here. You can see that the depth of response can vary from, um, you know, very deep response to 100% or otherwise. Um, they're all wide resist 1.1, of course, as the assessments are, and 72% of the patients had a reduction in their uh, target lesions. As I noted before, where we are in terms of the status of this program is we are in cohort four, which is our pivotal cohort. We started patient dosing in Q1 2019. We expect to finish dosing in about a year, and we expect to submit this to the BLA by late 2020. Um, we have also expect that we present this data to e, uh, CHMP. We expect to, to go talk to the agencies in second part of this year and, and uh, uh, sort of discuss the registration path for this product in EU as well. Um, I won't go into details. This slide can be found on our, um, on our website. This is basically available um, studies in the post-PD-1 metastatic melanoma landscape if you're interested to see what the competitive landscape looks like. Um, I will only go through cervical cancer maybe very quickly. Cervical cancer in U.S. is 13,000 new cases, and unfortunately, 4,000 of them die annually. In ex-U.S., it's a much larger problem, and unfortunately, about 50% of them unfortunately die. There's very little that has been recently approved. In fact, in the past 20 years, there's been really very little that was offered to these patients. Everybody thought that post-HPV vaccination, this disease is going to disappear, and that just has not happened. This has plateaued very much. Um, available care really involves chemo radiotherapy in first line, and as an accelerated approval, Keytruda was recently approved with a 14% response rate. So available care in second line is really around 10% response rate to the best we can find. Um, the available data for TIL was 28% response rate, so that intrigued us to start a study for cervical cancer. We had a Simons two stage design. Uh, we obviously passed the second stage some time ago. And the key updates are we have expanded this study to 59 patients with a primary endpoint of blinded IRC review in anticipation to uh, discuss this study with FDA in around mid-year to discuss our registration path. Um, again, this study also is global, has a number of different XUS sites specifically in EU involved, and we have orphan drug designation and fast track. In terms of response rate, we had um, 15 patients worth of data that we could read as part of a financing that we conducted in 2018, and we had a response rate of 27%, which is uh, quite comparable for what is available for these patients. We did not have long enough follow-up for me to report a DOR to you. We had patients that were follow in follow-up of two to three months. But we, will, uh, we have gotten into ASCO, and we will provide an update for you at ASCO 2019, both for cervical and melanoma indications. 
I switched gears to research. Uh, we have a very active research pipeline. We really have to um, make sure that we control sort of our, our uh, resources given that we only have 100 people in the company. We are targeting heme with a new product called uh, peripheral blood lymphocytes or PBL. Um, and we expect to provide this information as part of a new IND to FDA in 2019. We also have other research programs that involve selection of more potent TIL, as well as genetic modification of TIL, which may involve permanent genetic modification or transient genetic modification. Those are in collaborations with Selectus as well as Pharma Pharmaceuticals. Financially, we are in a comfortable position. We have uh, zero debt, and at year end, we had 469 million cash in hand, which allows us to carry the program for another two to three years, and we hope to be able to submit to the BLA as well as maybe um, be get ready for commercialization. In 2019, uh, we have started sort of checking off some of the activity lists that we have, including getting our first patient dosed, uh, going to ASCO and pro providing data update for cervical and melanoma, um, and uh, ultimately, we are planning on in EU approaching uh, the EU health authorities to discuss our registration program. With that, I'll stop, and I'm happy to answer any questions afterwards. Thank you.